Hello again everyone, it's me Matt Smith, hope you're having a wonderful day and thank you for joining me on today's video. We are discussing firearms once again and a very famous, well-renowned firearm that has been upgraded to a more modified standard that we're going to look at today. The MG3 machine gun produced and manufactured in Germany. What a beautiful piece of military hardware this thing is, truly it is outstanding. Now. To many of the most untrained eyes, this weapon looks exactly like the beautiful World War II MG42 machine gun. And in all honesty, it, it is an MG42, it's just chambered in 7.62x51 with some other minor changes. Based on the German MG42 of World War II fame, the MG3 is essentially a rechambered version of the 7.92mm Mauser to 7.62mm NATO. MG3 is quite possibly one of the finest single barreled medium machine guns ever built, and I'm going to tell you exactly today why. Made by Heckler & Koch, the infamous German weapon industries, the MG3 is rifled to just about any other purpose made machine gun out there. It fires 1200 rounds per minute, which may seem quite fast, but actually it is a lot slower than the MG42, which fired around 1500 rounds per minute, which gave it the nickname of Hitler's buzzsaw. The classic MG42 was chambered for the 7.92mm by 57mm, which is a much bigger round than the current 308 round we see today. The MG3 is also one of the easiest machine guns to ever use, and can be used in either two-man teams or just as your own one-man army. The MG3 and MG42 both have a brilliant barrel design, and most machine guns use either an air cooling or water cooling units to keep the barrels from overheating due to friction from obviously the bullets. With this machine gun, the barrel interchangeable system is actually very easy to use, and the MG3 unit uses a design that allows for the barrel to be removed out of the side and replaced with another without having to actually recite the weapon. Now the MG3 obviously comes from a derivative of multiple World War II German machine guns, and it's got quite a history, and I think it's best that we talk about that before we actually get onto the specifics of the more modernised version of this machine gun. To start off then, we have to discuss the MG34 machine gun, which was adopted by the Wehrmacht, and had the weapon that was envisioned some 20 years before. The MG34 bears the distinction of being the first practical, universal or general purpose machine gun. While the MG34 was good and practical, it certainly was not ideal. German experts wanted their machine guns to fire a lot faster while being simpler and less costly. A high rate of fire was desirable for both AA applications and for surprise flanking fire against targets moving through the battlefield. As early as 1937, there was an issued request for the new Universal Machine Gun, and three companies received development contracts. The companies that designed them in 1939 commissioned a selected made MG39 prototype for further development, designed by an engineer Gruner, often wrongly referred to as Graunau, and small arms designer Horn. The new weapon, in accordance with other requests from the time, had a stamped steel construction combined with a locked breech, short recoil action. Initial trials suggested that the MG needed further development, and in late 1941 a small batch of around 1500 pieces, which in my eyes really isn't small, of improved guns was manufactured for troop trials as the MG 3941. The new machine gun, while being made to lower standards of fit and finish, proved to be quite functional and reliable a feature that much more refined MG34 lacked, especially in the mud and snow of the Russian front. Subsequently, it was officially adopted as the MG42, and production commenced later the same year. In general terms, the MG42 was actually a great success. It fulfilled the roles of light machine guns on a bipod, a medium machine gun on a newly developed Lafette 42 tripod, and an anti-aircraft machine gun mounted in a single twin or double installation, which could be stacked as fours, as ground or vehicle mounted. It was relatively inexpensive to make and required a lot less raw materials than the MG34, and it was simple to maintain and use. On the minus side, however, it did have somewhat excessive rates of fire, which usually quoted to around 1200 rounds per minute. Although the German World War II era manuals listed it as 1500 rounds per minute, or 25 rounds per second. This rate of fire resulted in excessive consumption of ammunition and extreme overheating. While extremely rapid barrel change procedures allowed for sustained fire, the resulting accuracy left something to be desired, which caused excessive recoil from vibration, and combined with very short sight radiuses, resulted in the degrading long-range accuracy compared to the earlier MG34, and especially the heavy MG08 Maxim guns. Nonetheless, the MG42 was an impressive and fearsome weapon, known along as the Allied soldiers as Hitler's saw. 
for the sound of firing which resembled the sound of a giant mechanical saw. And we all know of the MG42 and even the MG3's distinctive fire rate which can be sound across the battlefield and is pretty distinctive. After World War II, this weapon, unlike any other wartime designs, actually lived on. As in 1958, the first West Germany reinstituted official armed force, known as the Bundeswehr, decided to form it as their main machine gun. Since the core of the Bundeswehr was formed by World War II veterans, it was logical to adopt weapons which were already proven and familiar to the troops, and the MG42 was one of these such weapons. It was obviously though chambered for a non-NATO cartridge, but this was really only a minor issue, as the 7.62x51mm NATO and the 7.92x57mm Mauser shared the same cartridge base diameter, and were somewhat similar in ballistics. The real problem, however, was that Germany had lost the manufacturing facilities for the MG42 machine gun, so the newly re-established Rheinmetall had to actually begin production facilities from the ground up. The production documentation for the original MG42 machine guns was actually obtained from the Grossfuss company and transferred to Rheinmetall. German government had to actually pay the significant amount of royalties to Johannes Grossfuss for the manufacturing rights. Since the preparation for the manufacture took some time, the FRG purchased some of the ex Wehrmacht MG42 weapons from other countries. Those guns were converted to the 7.62mm NATO by Rheinmetall and officially designated the MG2. The newly produced machine guns went through a number of modifications which resulted in the definitive MG3 version, which is still rather close in design to the wartime MG42, although made to a much higher standard of fit and finish. The simplicity, low manufacturing costs and high effectiveness of the MG3 attracted several other countries which either bought the guns from Rheinmetall such as Denmark or obtained the manufacturing license and built their own. Many countries use this weapon system today such as Italy, Iran, Turkey, Pakistan and Yugoslavia. In total at least 20 armies including those who have been procuring the weapon systems since World War II have used or are still using the MG3 or MG42 platform and its versions thereof. It must be noted though that in some countries these guns were used under their commercial Rheinmetall designation of the MG42-59. The machine gun, although very similar to the MG42, does have some minor modifications, but its basic design is of the same. It is a short recoil operated, air-cooled, belt-fed weapon which fires from an open bolt. The barrel is very quick removable and can be replaced in about 6 seconds by a properly trained crew although an asbestos glove or protective glove is required to remove the hot barrel due to the rate of rounds that can go through it and its rate of fire. This allows for a game changer on the battlefield, if the barrel can be changed quickly more rounds can be put down range. The action of the weapon is operated by a recoil of the locked barrel, assisted by a muzzle booster which uses pressure from the muzzle blast to increase the recoil impulse. Locking is achieved by a pair of rollers which are forced outwards from the sides of the bolt head to engage cuts in the barrel extension. Locking outward movement of the rollers is controlled by a wedge shaped front part of the bolt body and the inward movement of the rollers are made by cams in the receiver. This is a simple but very solid system which minimizes the length of parts that are under stress upon discharge and also minimizes the strain on the receiver. On the MG3 machine guns two types of bolts are available with standard weights of about 650 grams for a fast rate of fire and a heavy weight of 900 gram bolts. For slow rates of fire, it must be noted that the bolts are used along with a different return spring. The receiver and the barrel jacket are made in one unit and formed from a sheet of rolled steel, cut to the shape by pressing and stamping and then welded and pinned to the form of the gun housing of generally rectangular cross section. The front part of the housing serves as the barrel jacket and has a number of oval cooling slots at all sides except on the right. The right side of the jacket has one long slot which can be used to remove the barrel itself. This machine gun can only be fed by using belts. The feed direction is from left to right and the feed is in one stage, a push through type. The belt is the same for the MG34 with steel links as the open pockets assemble in a non disintegrating 50 round length. Holding to the history of the MG34 and MG42, the weapon system of the MG3 can actually have a lightweight plastic 50 round belt container which was developed in West Germany by Heckler and Koch and is now issued to all MG3 machine guns. This allows the capability of still being able to carry a large proportion of ammunition but without a huge box attached to it. Each MG42 and MG3 was issued with an integral adjustable bipod attached near the muzzle. The MG3 guns however have two points for the bipod attachment, one near the muzzle and another near the centre of the gun. 
In the medium role, the MT-42 was used on the Lafette 42, a complicated foldable tripod with a buffered cradle. A wide number of tripods and bipods are now available for MG3 machine guns, as they have been produced in several different countries and different designs have been made. Some people have complained about trying to load the belt into the feed tray can actually be quite difficult. The charging handle is located at the right side of the receiver and is separated from the bolt group, which means it does not move when firing, reducing risk to the operator when actually operating such a large round if the bolt was to move back and forth with such a large cocking handle. The charging handle itself is quite prominent on the MG42 and MG3 due to the fact that the charging handle is almost like a handle pointing up and down vertical than the standard left and right horizontal of other machine guns. The standard sights are open, fully adjustable and mounted on folding bases. The universal tripod does have provisions for mounting telescopic sights for long range and indirect fire missions. However, for the most part in an infantry fighting role, the standard sights are used. When using this weapon system, it does like to overheat because of the fact that it can put so many rounds down range. The normal drill is to replace it after around 150 round bursts. However, in contact, this rate can be increased to 200 to 250. As a general purpose machine gun, the MG3 has a very high rate of fire between 700 to 1300 rounds per minute. However, the barrel change must be done at normally around 250 rounds maximum to prevent overheating and actually warping of the barrel, reducing its accuracy. Some gunners have reported that putting so many rounds down range on this weapon system have caused malfunctions to the point that it could be extremely dangerous. Being that it's an open bolt system, there has been also risk of the weapon system going off when trying to perform drills to either clear the action or allow the weapon system to be unloaded. Overall, it's very safe to say that this machine gun is definitely proven itself to be extremely versatile, very, very capable, and to this day still very, very good at doing what it needs to do on the battlefield. The MG3 still to this day is one of the finest machine guns ever, and I would safely say that I really would love to have a go of one of these machine guns, just so I can hear that sound of that sort of high speed rate of fire and that thud that you get from that recoil adapter at the front there. Very, very impressive machine gun, and if you have had experiences on this, I would love to hear your feedback and what you think of it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you learned a little bit about this fantastic weapon system. Please let me know if you did enjoy the video by hitting the like button, and if you want to talk to me a little bit more about anything military related, you're more than welcome to come check out my Discord channel. It is in the description box below, along with my merchandise store, Facebook site, and Patreon, on which many of you have been supporting and giving me donations to, so thank you so much. I cannot express how much I appreciate each and every one of you for supporting my channel. It really really means a lot so thank you to everyone who's been doing so i'm also trying to do a crowdfund for a tank i guess not really a tank a uh, armored personnel carrier which is really just a meme um, but if you do have interest in supporting that crowdfund it's also in the description box below thank you again everyone for joining me today have a wonderful day all the best bye bye